Thursday, New York City students will head back to school. The threat of a school bus strike is on hold for now, but the Department of Education faces other unique challenges this academic year. Schools Chancellor David Banks joins us now live to discuss what parents and students can expect. Good morning, Chancellor. Thanks for being with us. Thanks so much for having so me. So I remember when the first day of school was rolling around in the days leading up, there was that mix of anxiety, a little excitement, a little nervousness. What are you feeling today? That, that hasn't changed. For all of us, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, kids are excited. Uh, it's the end of the summer in many ways, and we're ready to kick off another school year, which I think is really going to be a very, very exciting year. So let's talk about something that we just mentioned. We'll jump right into the topics. This looming school bus strike. Sure. We know it's on hold for now, but there is the possibility. Uh, your thoughts on that, where it stands right now with the negotiations? Still, still very hopeful, Chris. You know, there, there are negotiations that are happening around the clock. Uh, nobody wants to see a strike. We know that there will not be a strike for the first two days of school. That much we are assured of. Yeah. Um, but after that, we're fingers cross uh, but everyone's still at the table trying to get a deal done but in the event that there is uh, we have prepared and so we've issued communications to all of our families there'll be a emergency metro cars which will be issued uh, a number of our families will be eligible for ride share and uh, and there'll be reimbursements for those who have to take taxis as well to get back and forth to school and or to work so uh, we put out a solid communications plan and we'll continue to stay in communication with our families I wanted to ask you about the asylum seeker crisis I mean since last Last year, you're talking numbers, nearly 20,000 additional students. Do you feel like you have the resources, the employees, the infrastructure to handle that? Well, the city certainly needs more support, and that's why they've been continuing the, the fight to get more dollars and resources from the federal government. At the school level, um, we have welcomed these students with open arms, and uh, we've absorbed them into our schools. We've welcomed them. Uh, it has gone pretty well. The problem that we have is that because of where they are in these temporary shelters they're limited to the number of schools that we're really able to send them mm. so some schools have seen a little bit more overcrowding we're working really hard to alleviate that but um, a thousand students we brought in over the summer almost 20,000 since last summer but we've done a really good job of making sure those kids feel welcome how are you able to do that with the, the students that currently go to those schools you've got you've got kids from all over the world 15 sure. different languages in some cases you know teaching English as a new language ENL with the abbreviation people have heard. I know there was an announcement that was going to be made on how you would facilitate all those different uh, languages that will be spoken in schools. Any ground broken on that? You know, first of all, Chris, there's no place like New York City. Uh, we, we, the whole world goes to school here. Yeah. <laughs> right? So this is not new for us. We've got over 3,400 English as a new language teachers, over 1,700 bilingual teachers. And I want to remind folks that five years prior to this administration, we actually lost 120,000 families left the system. So we actually have the room for these students. We welcome them and uh, we'll continue to try to get more teachers in place. we got a big announcement we're going to be making on Thursday uh, of some work that we've been doing we think is going to be very helpful for us. I wanted to ask you about what parents are talking to you about. I'm sure you hear it all the time. Are the new students taking away resources and funding from the students who've been going through the New York public schools since the very beginning? I mean, what are those things that you say to them who are concerned about the uh, new students coming in 20,000 from la from last year. Yeah, no, we've not heard that as an overwhelming concern. And it's again because we've lost so many families, uh, we welcome uh, the additional students. Uh, so that really has not been a, a real problem. What parents are talking to me about is reading okay. and the fact that so many of our kids in our New York City public schools don't read well. That's why we announced NYC Reads last uh, year. And we're really excited. Our teachers have been trained. We're going to be rolling it out with almost half of our school districts this year. It's our number one initiative, making sure we get all kids on grade level. The other thing that parents talk to us about is safety. And uh, when they send their kids to school, they want to ensure that kids are safe. So let's talk about the safety issue since you did bring that up. Locked doors or something that is going to be new this year as far as pa parents or whoever comes to the school having to buzz in, a little bit more of a kind of a checks and balances at school where doors aren't just open for people to move freely. Um, over 700 schools, is that correct? That yes. That's going to currently have that. Yep. Talk to me about that program and just, I guess, putting parents at ease that safety is a, a priority considering the fact we hear so much about what's going on in schools and there is a genuine fear I think parents and students have alike. Across the nation, we've all borne witness to so many of these tragedies where people have walked in and shot up an entire school. Yeah. Uh, we don't want to have that happen. That has not happened here in New York City and we're going to do everything we can to ensure that it does not happen. So we have 744 elementary schools. We've 
already started putting in our new door locking system. After the kids get into school, we're going to lock that front door. And uh, there'll be a door locking and a camera system. So anyone who's showing up at the school has to present themselves so that we know who you are and why you're there. It's not meant to keep parents out. It's meant to ensure an additional level of safety and security for all of our kids. We're excited about it, and we'll be done with the elementary schools by the spring, and at that point, we'll start with the middle schools and all of our high schools. So by the following year, we'll be fully staffed and, and ready to go, fully secured schools. Big change there, and I wanted to ask you about the big change you mentioned in regard to reading. It's a really different approach to reading that we've seen the past few years, and you brought that in. That was one of your first initiatives to say, we're going to change the way we teach reading. Why did you decide to do that, and what were they missing in that other program? 51% of the kids in the New York City public schools do not read on grade level. 64% of black and brown kids do not read on grade level in New York City. But what we realized was that it's a national phenomenon. You know, in the city of Detroit, 91% of the kids do not read on grade level. In Detroit, 80% in Chicago. It's ridiculous, and we have to do better. The approach that we took to how we teach kids to read for the last 20 years has been a flawed approach, something we call balanced literacy. It did not teach kids how to fundamentally decode words. You can't love to read if you have not fundamentally learned how to read. So we're going to ensure that that happens. We've been training our teachers all across the city. We're rolling it out on the first day of school, and uh, we think it's going to be a transformational work. Why would something like that take so long to be implemented, though? I mean, you see these numbers across the board. Obviously, the, the trend was going lower and lower year to year. Why did it take so long to finally, for someone to, to wake up and the bell to be sounded like, hey, we need to do a little bit better work, job here for our kids? Chris, it's like, the, it's like the March of the Lemmings. Everybody was following what they thought was the, uh, the right way. We all kind of went off the side of the mountain for the last 20, 25 years, we were following what was considered research and expertise from local universities who said this is the way to go, uh, and they got it wrong, and it was the wrong playbook. It was not the fault of our teachers, certainly not the fault of our kids, um, but it is the number one priority I have as chancellor to ensure that all of our kids are going to be on grade level. What is the one thing you want parents to know as the students are heading back to school? Is there something you would say or recommend to parents? Day one. Yeah, first of all, I want them to be assured that the kids are going to be safe. That's number one. And then number two, that they're going to read, and that's going to connect to success in math and all their other subject areas. So that's what I'm really excited about. I want parents to continue to just read with your kids. If you don't do anything else, just read. Read interesting articles. Read interesting books. Spend 15 to 20 minutes a day just reading, having your child read to you as well. Reading, reading, reading is our message. You can't employ that enough. As a parent of two young kids, I know that's what I'm trying. I know Mary's already been through this, <laughs> but with my with seven and a two and a half year old, and all I'm trying to do every night, we read, we read, especially coming out of the summer. It's like it's time to kind of reimmerse yourself back into the whole learning process. That's right. Finding things that really interest them. A couple of, uh, of other topics I just want to talk about here. We know safety is, is priority one for the kids. With that being said, I know this week there's been talk of vaccinations with some of the asylum seeker kids that are going to be in school not being mandated to be vaccinated. I'm not just talking about COVID. I'm talking about vaccines overall. Whereas city school kids have to be vaccinated. Where is the, I, I guess that, how do you assure parents is, parents rather, that their kids are going to be safe from a health standpoint? Yeah, well, we, we're, we're a little concerned about this this uptake in, uh, uptick in, in COVID yeah. anyway. And as we come into the beginning of the school year and into the fall, we always get an uptake anyway in flu and, and so many other issues. Kids start to get sick as we kick off the school year. Uh, so we're certainly encouraging everyone to get their vaccinations. All the new students who are being admitted, we admit them on day one, yep. but, uh, but we, we make sure we push that they get their vaccinations as quickly as possible. Uh, we want everybody to be safe. I want our parents to know that all of our kids will be fine. Is that going to change at all, or do you expect to continue it that way, that they will not be required to be vaccinated? Has that been considered? Yeah, well, that's where we are right, that's where we are right now. We, we, get them in on, we get them in on day one, um, but, but we work with them and the families very, qu uh, very quickly to get the vaccinations, and oftentimes it's done within days, if not weeks, uh, to make sure that the kids get what they need.
So a big takeaway for parents that are saying to themselves, okay, wait a second, these schools with, with this influx, Mary mentioned the number, almost 20,000 kids. At what point do we say we can't take on any more kids? Are we, are we nearing capacity? Or as you mentioned, with 120,000 families leaving in the last couple of years, is there ample room to bring in more kids to the school system? Well, you know, it's an interesting question, uh, Chris, because we've got room across our system. Yeah. Um, the problem has been that we've concentrated a, a lot of the kids into a smaller subset of schools. And that can be a little bit of a challenge for some of those schools. So we're working really hard to alleviate some of that. The larger challenge are the resources that are associated with housing. And that's the challenge that the mayor has and the reason why he's continued to put out the call to the federal government. We need help. We need more dollars to help these families. The city should not have to absorb all these costs. Uh, kudos to all of our principals, our our schools, our teachers that have done a phenomenal job in helping to welcome all these families with open arms. But the federal government has responsibility and we need help. Absenteeism, how have you found that to be in the New York City public schools and how are you gonna tackle that this year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, chronic absenteeism was something that was a real challenge for us last year, particularly coming off of the pandemic. A lot of kids still feeling a disconnect with schools, uh, but we're beginning to see those numbers turn around as kids have gotten back more to the, uh, to the routine of actually being back in schools. And when you make schools more exciting and create a curriculum that is relevant and kids feel more successful in school, uh, they, they're, more, they're more prepared to come back and to be in school. So we're excited about that as well. And Jensen, before we let you go, we've been talking about this hot weather, this heat wave this week. Any plans to potentially shorten some early school days here these next couple of days? Or? No. Nope. No. No. <laughs> no. Right yeah, school is back. You had a whole hot summer. Everybody. They didn't complain during the summer. We're back. We're going to start to see the temperatures come down yeah. as we start the school year. But we said to everybody, come on back. It's going to be a great year. It's the beginning of the school year. It's going to be fun and exciting. It's going to be a great year for all of our kids. Well, we wish you the very best, and thank you so much for taking some time to talk to us. We really appreciate it. Appreciate you. Thank yes, you. New York thank City you Schools much. Chancellor David Banks.